Hello, this is As the World Burns. I'm your host, Randall Burns. It is May 1st, 2021. Today's topic is the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Now, this is one of the most popular books ever written. I first encountered it when I was in college at the University of Chicago in 19, must, must have been 1979, 1980. Uh, and I did find some inspiration from the book. I mean, it, it was it was helpful, I, I felt, and motivational. After reading the book, I moved to Silicon Valley and embarked in an IT career with some modest success. The, the main pro reservations I have about the book is I don't think that Napoleon Hill is upfront about just who he is, what he is, and where his sources of inspiration came from. Okay, uh, with a little bit of research, okay, the, the book is rooted in the New Thought Movement, which inspired a bunch of other uh, churches, like for example, the Christian Science Church, the Unity Church, and several others. It's a you know, Protestant, largely Protestant movement, uh, largely philosophical. The philosophy is rooted in Ralph Waldo Emerson, as he does admit, okay? And there's a lot to be said about the New Thought Movement. It's, 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 it's been around for a while. You can, you can look at you know, ver you know, various advocates of it that are around today. I mean, these people actually exist and you can look and see, right? But the other thing that bothers me is that if you look in, in the New Thought literature, like one of the other books that came out of that movement is The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. And after I read Waddles' book and I, I, I realized, oh my God, this, isn't, this wasn't anything particularly new, was it? I mean, basically he took a, another popular book from the era, uh, waited you know, came, came along another, you know, 30, 28 years later when people had kind of forgotten about it and rehashed it and added some stuff to it and took it, you know, took it bigger. And uh, this was, you know, Napoleon Hill was writing during the Depression when a lot of people were looking for some inspiration. And so he rehashed a previous book and took it bigger time. Now, Charlatans sometimes misrepresent the work of others as their own. This is not, I've seen this in other folks. I, there was a man that I got to know that was, a, that was one of a, a hippie guru in the Haight-Ashbury when I lived in San Francisco. And that was part of his operating MO was he would represent the work of others as his own. And this has been picked up on by others. There's a, there's, a, there's a fairly lengthy essay that I'll link to below where it turns out that Napoleon Hill made a lot of claims of associations and people that he had, con that he had interviewed or had contact with that maybe he really hadn't. And I'll, I'll, let, that I'll let the essay there stand for itself, right? Now, there is good in Napoleon Hill's book. It's not like it's a, I won't say that it's a complete scam. Okay. Or, or you know, at least not, you know, there's, there's real motivation there and there's real inspiration there. But the other thing that I found, what I found was that after having re re read it and getting into the business world is that I was encountering more uh, con artists than I would feel comfortable with. There's a certain amount of that in business that's inevitable, you know, especially in a fast moving business that will attract people of that ilk. But I didn't see that the Napoleon Hill advice prepared me for reading those folks out particularly well. Okay. Now, what that meant in my own business, like for example, I, I had the first big company I went to work with was Fortune Systems, which turns out to have been a scam to go public. Basically, some people got a bunch of talent together. They got some funding. Uh, the thing that was kind of sad about it is that they actually had accumulated some real Unix talent and had they played it straight, they might've been 
uh, they might have occupied the niche that was later on occupied by, by Sun Microsystems. But they, they, did, they did not do that. Okay. And they were doing things like, for example, they had a, uh, they, they, they were doing a demo where they were claiming to be demonstrating their machine. And when you looked behind the curtain, there was actually a deck box running their software, but you know, their, their box was actually not operational. That was uh, Gary Friedman got caught doing that at the West Coast Computer Fair. And, you know, I wasn't prepared for people doing that type of thing in the business world before I entered. Okay, I'll put it that way. Uh, a few years later, I worked for another company, which was Technology, and they were found that, that by a large number of people in the Stanford AI department. And Ed Feigenbaum was a huckster. Uh, the legend was that his wife was was motivating him to do whatever it took to make money for the family. And they went public and made money and that you know, he made money that way and they didn't do a real product. Now I was fortunate in that the next company I worked at after that was a company called HNC and they were very real. And if I had simply taken the stock option when they were offering it, I might have been, I might have become quite wealthy in the process, but I was uh, too burned out at that point to do it. So that was my own lesson from that process, right? But I, I treasure the experience. I'm grateful for it. And the, my main point on it is, is on this one is, is that there is motivation and inspiration there, but you maybe need to go a little bit further there and you need to go a little bit more in depth. Now, one thing that Hill talks about that is not in Waddle's book, and I will review Waddle's books separately, is he talks about a mastermind group. This reminds me of what's now called Estimate Talk estimate or the Delphi method, which is a management technique for containing groupthink and crowd hysteria in management teams and for doing scheduling. And there may be some earlier sources that talk about this that I'm not aware of, but that's where I was exposed to it in the management literature. And so that's something that's that's added uh, beyond the, uh, the visualization techniques that Waddle's discussed earlier, which are derived from Hegel and Emerson. And, you know, Emerson is a, is a clear influence on the New Thought movement that got people took him late, later there, okay? Now, one thing about it is, I, I don't, uh, is that this stuff has been picked up on by people who have taken it further, and I think generally have degraded each, each iteration they take it. So I, I would tend to go to the earlier sources like Waddles and Emerson to get something that's truer to the original, to get a real sense of what these books were talking about. I think it's unfair to say, for example, they were claiming they can do things by pure thought. I think it was more like they were saying that the first step towards action is thought, is, is my interpretation from having read them. But I would, again, I would say, don't stop at Napoleon Hill, go further than that. And it's not like it's a, a horrible book. It's not like it's going to, you know, but it's not going to take you where you need to go by itself, in my opinion. So this is Randall Burns. Thank you very much for your time. Like this video. Let me know. I want to make you, I want to make you more content. And I'll be back soon. You take care.